with these additional freedoms, people are able to talk about the fact that you could have networks of fundamental strings that would appear in nature and be appearing in microwave background, gravitational lensing, and creating gravitational waves. Even though um, the claim is, I understand this, that fundamental, how would you tell the difference? And then it supposedly is a difference observationally if you actually look at the fundamental string compared to a topological defect string in the dynamics. If you saw them in the background and in the sky, there's one feature called intercommutation. So if you have two strings that have to form a loop like this, and, and they pass through each other, in a, um, in a topological string, Understanding is that the intercommutation relationship is close to one, so they swap, they swap n when they pass through each other generically. Whereas um, in, if you have fundamental strings, again, different people will make different claims, but that this is not a necessary outcome that you, are, you, are, you might, you might you be likely to have an outcome that has the ends and passing through each other without swapping ends. So that supposedly a dynamically observable difference between topological ones and fundamental ones. Yeah, I don't think that's, I don't think it's, I'm on the anti side of that because I think that this, uh, I think it, it, any fundamental string theory you can think of where you don't get intercommutation, and often what you get is that there's another third string that connects them. So the point is that they don't, the network itself doesn't decay away as quickly because when two strings go by, they sort of knot up. Right. They, they can get a third string between them, so the whole network lasts longer. And it's true that if you had an ordinary string made from the Mexican hat potential that we were talking about, those intercommute very, very quickly. But it's almost true that any kind of non-intercommutation that you can get from fundamental strings, you could get from field theory strings if you worked hard enough. You can invent non-abelian symmetries that will give you fundamental strings that would not let you intercommute. So I think there's a difference between fundamental strings and simple gauge theory strings that come from U1 gauge symmetries that are broken. But it's not an absolute statement that you can make about any theories, any strings you can make from field theory. I think you can make more complicated field theories where you can also get the non-intercomputation. So for the spectrum tension, basically, you can get well, no, I think, again, so the, 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 the claim is that the, not the different, you can get in field theory, you have fundamental strings and different kinds of strings that are called D strings, and you can also have multiply charged strings and so forth. And these are not things you're familiar with from good old cosmic string uh, papers in the cosmology literature. But again, I think that's just because the cosmologists were looking at the simplest possible case. You can look at more complicated cases. You have networks of strings with different tensions, different charges, different commutation relations. Uh, and you know, you tell me what you want, and I can make right down with action and give it to you. You can have strings, you can even have, uh, there's a famous, if you were, uh, 10 years ago, if you went to string theory talks, the first picture everyone would draw would be this. Okay? That is a string ending on a deep ring. They were very excited by this. You can get cosmic strings that end on domain walls in exactly the same way. Basically, there really is a duality between fundamental objects and these composite solitonic objects. So I can make any one that I want out of fields if I want to. And then the question of are they fundamental or not is just a bogus question because it depends on how you choose your variables. I'm going to say that the dark matter 